I am going to be an architect. Yeah, yeah. One side, man is old side. Yeah. Sit on everybody's head. Shout at everyone. Get it done. And what is the fun in this profession if you are going to do the same thing again and again? I am here today at the thick of a busy day at Sanjay Puri's office to have an unusually usual conversation with him. Hi viewers, this is Mohit Hajela, Group Head Business Development with Jaguar Group with Architectural Digest, powered by Artis. While the world knows him as a renowned architect and designer, I am here to talk to the friend I know with possibly the best moves on a dance floor. Fortunately, Sanjay has pushed modern Indian design and architecture forward. He has created some of the most memorable designs, all the while celebrating Indian traditional craftsmanship. Now, without much ado, let's go and meet the man himself. Thanks for hosting us at your creative den, Sanjay. Allow me to take you back in time. Growing up, were you the shy, curious, and the nerdy type in the boarding school? <laughs> Shy but not nerdy. Yeah, I was always in my own shell. Literally, always in my own shell. And at Mayo College, do you believe you took away some key learnings that shaped the person you are today? I really think so. Some I mean, key learnings. That was learning to another level. Right from being independent, because of course, you're in a boarding school, so you have to be independent. That is one aspect. The second aspect is Mayo gave this sense of whole freedom thing. We had to choose out of certain options to do things like arts and crafts and music and whatever. So I've done cardboard modeling, wood sculptures, played music instruments. So all of these factors at that time you don't realize, but they help a lot later on. Now you realize when you decided to do architecture that, hey, model making, it's so easy. While other people were struggling with, they didn't even know what thing to use to stick with. But in school or college, um were you frequently praised for your skills by your teachers or peers? How did you learn to be confident and build your self-esteem? So in school, yeah, the praise was only for the art. Mm -hmm. If you were really great in studies, nobody praised you. Mm -hmm. Nobody. So it was like, you're good in a sport. Wow, this guy's a rock star. The day I won a race of 400 meters, I can't believe the number of people who came and said like, wow, Puri, you did great, man. I said, shit, anything else you did, nobody said anything. Yeah? <laughs> but yeah, you, you came first in 400 meters, suddenly you're, you're, you're like a popular guy. And the other time was when the arts teacher declared me as the artist of the year. And so the artist of the year got a whole wall in the exhibition, whereas everybody else got one or two pictures to put up. So yeah, that was a great thing. But I still didn't have confidence. Confidence happened surprisingly after coming to Bombay. And uh, my dad made me take these uh, public speaking classes. Mm -hmm. That is also when I did that last speech and this guy Nazareth tells me, you've got the kind of voice that when you speak in a mic, it changes and people will pay attention to what you're saying because of the sound of your voice. I didn't believe it. And after that, because of the confidence I got in that public speaking, I went and stood for class representative. <laughs> <laughs> Till then, one year I hardly spoken to anybody in the class, okay? And then I go and stand for class representative. And I won. And then the real confidence came after joining architecture. Because before joining architecture, I joined Hafiz at the age of 18. I read that book, Fountainhead. So I thought architecture is this amazing thing to do. But then I said, is it really as amazing in real life? So I asked around, you know, that do you know any architect? My dad said, I don't know any architect, I know a contractor called Subhash Gogia. I go to his office and he says, Beta, you go and join. This young guy has just started his office, Hafiz. I'll tell him. And watching Hafiz, I got that confidence. Because he would literally walk in and uh, without knowing about something, like let's say what the builder wants to make, he just go on straight and then start drawing and sketching there in front of the guy. And he told me, he said that, never act like you're not an architect yet. When you go and meet somebody, you're representing me, right? You're a qualified architect. I had not even joined College of Architecture. And then while I was working at that age of 18, I had gone to Hafi Sami to measure some office. I measured it, made the drawing. So he said, hey, Sanjay, what happened to that office? I said, I already made the drawing. He made the drawing. Call the client. I said, no, how can I call the client here? I'm 18 years old, man. He said, what? Call the client. Go meet them. Show them that you've done the thing. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I did. So yeah, so because he pushed me into things like that, no? So the confidence yeah. comes. So mm -hmm. go on side, man is the whole side. 
और मैंने तो ओल्ड साइड मीन आई एटीन ईयर ओल्ड आई बीन टू थ्री साइड बिफोर माई लाइफ इन जस्ट लेफ्ट मी ऑन साइड यू मैने द शो वी टू फिनिश ऑफिस इन ऑन मारा हाफ मंथ सिट ऑन एवरी बडी जेड शॉर्ट एड एवरी वन गेट इट डन Yeah, so day two, you know, be being thrown into the storm, and yeah, you so know, literally, and I was thrown it. into it. <laughs> <laughs> was becoming a designer something you always dreamt of, or uh, did it happen to you by accident? So a happy accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I still love bio. Yeah. I thought I'll be a doctor also because from my mom's side, the entire family, three generations, and oh, everybody's a doctor. So the thing was there that I'm going to be a doctor, and then got this artist of the year and all that. I said, no, no, I'm going to be an artist. Artist is my thing. I'm going to be an artist. <laughs> and then I happened to be fountain head, and then I said, no, I'm going to be an architect. <laughs> <laughs> so it was that way. Uh, who were your heroes growing up, and uh, what did you take away from them? So I joined Hafiz at eighteen, and he was my role model for a long time. And he gave me so much confidence. He entrusted me projects which are like huge. While I was still studying, surely, surely he is, and do uh, you enter so many? <laughs> <laughs> But do you ever procrastinate? And uh, if yes, how do you get past the bout of procrastination? Once in a while, on a certain thing, you do procrastinate, and you think that you know, for that time, we didn't have workmanship the way. it is required to do a project of that size and that nature and that geometry maybe i should have waited so that's the kind of procrastination and a typical example i'll give you is the bombay art society we won the job after the guys these artists had gone around to various people they went crazy over it they said this is what we were looking for you know we went to so many architects everybody making these boxes you are the first one who made a building that looks like a sculpture but that was one of the cases where it was not as good as the 3d and that is because Nobody was able to get that form right. After we made 160 sections of one tiny building of 20,000 square feet, it's totally fluid. In this one floor plan, we had multiple floor plans because the building bulged in some parts, it went concave in some parts. The contracting teams and the software and technology was not there to be able to execute that kind of way the way we wanted. But now, I mean, um, as we move to the next segment, I want to have a quick game with you. Let's shift gears, you know, and have little action. The game is that I'll throw a word at you, and you will tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. This is almost like a rapid fire, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's begin. Friend. Jatin. Time. Make most use of it. Phone. It is crazy what a phone can do today. Craft. Craft is never ending. We just want to learn more and more and more and more all the time. I think it's an endless pursuit. Then it's so exciting, and every time you see a craft, you're like, "Oh my God!" You know, what can you do with this now? Teacher. Love to teach, but uh, not in a college and not at regular time intervals, which is why we just started this whole uh, design teaching platform. Super. Current read. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nina backbone Mumbai unbelievable but it's got a pulse of its own which is unmatched anywhere else Rolling to the next segment mm -hmm. we continue with Mumbai how did you manage to find your footing in bustling metropolis like Mumbai the competition seems to multiply <laughs> In the blink of an eye. So <laughs> well, that's because everything was in Mumbai. No, I started in Mumbai. First job was in Mumbai. College was in Mumbai. So it was a natural thing. So there was nothing about trying to create a foothold. You you already there. And fairly seen to be a city of dreams. So I mean, it becomes the most logical. More importantly, it is a place where things get done, where people say things that happen, and people don't waste time. That's very interesting. Yeah, I agree. But then the need to be a perfectionist plagues an artist, causing long delays or doubts that can lead you to shelving a project indefinitely. How have you embraced the imperfections in your work? So you have to try your best under the given circumstances. Okay, so you're working in thirty plus cities right now in India with small places like Bulthana, which I didn't know about until the client called from there. 
I had to Google and see where is Buldana. When you're doing work in all of these places, you try and find the best kind of person who's there to do that work and then work with them. And in the process, what you've learned is your drawings have to be amazing. You know, gone are those times where you could just go on a site and say, okay, you know, not like this, like this. You can't do that. Because A, you're working in all these remote places, so it's not possible to physically be there all the time. But thanks to videos and all that, you can keep seeing what's happening. And then also you have to keep running the guys. So for this one small 9,000 square feet community center that we built in Noka, we had video calls going on for eight months on a daily basis with the contractor. Contractor is local. Building was complicated. It's complicated because those people only used to making squares and this whole building had no straight line in it. So we had video calls, video calls, video calls all the time. And he's actually measuring and showing that, yes, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yes, exactly as per your drawing. Yes, I got it. Next one, next one, next one. And that's how the building got executed. And during COVID and all of that, to deal with imperfections, you first have to make excellent, amazing drawings. And, you know, we have a lot of talent in the country. Even the smallest contractor is capable of doing much larger things. And we've seen it in multiple projects. A person who never made a more than three-story building in his life went and made this Ishwatam building for us, which is twisted angles on every floor like this. Of course, we had to change the shuttering three times because he got it wrong. We corrected, we got it wrong, corrected. But after that, he made it and he executed it and it's beautifully executed. There was not a single, you know, one inch in and out anywhere. How have you cultivated the habit of taking yourself and your idea seriously, even in the most seemingly trivial moments? What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that you are still able to meticulously integrate so many a potpourri of thoughts? The thing is not to force something onto something. Simply because, and I have seen a lot of people do this, okay? They got this idea in the head and they just want to implement that idea. So you keep everything in mind and at the right time, you do the right thing. So maybe I can say uh, context and relevance going hand in hand. Yes, absolutely. Interestingly, your partner at work is also your spouse. To create such a successful partnership, is the trick never to take the work back home? So generally, it never happens that you're working on the same project. All point of time, there is one project only that is going on that is common, where I have done the architecture of the house and she's doing the interior. So yes, that discussion happens, but it really doesn't go into the dining table or anything of the sort. <laughs> but discussion of design does go on. <laughs> and then an extension to this, a life lesson you have learned from Nina. The lesson is uh, dealing with multiple things at a time. And I never used to do that earlier. I would just do one thing and keep doing that one thing. But now I can also do a reasonable amount of things at a time. So you are learning good. Yeah. <laughs> now, as an architect deeply rooted in Indian culture, how do you perceive the evolving influence of Asian culture on the global design landscape? And I have an extension to that also. How are Indian designers approaching this? So over the last few years, Specifically, Asian architecture and the way it deals with the problems of excessive heat and natural passive cooling, these examples are being taken to other parts of the world. And people across the world are taking cognizance of this aspect in Indian architecture and what Indian architects are doing. And over the same period of time, it has also happened that earlier Indian architects were trying to ape the West, but that is on ebbing and Indian architects are looking more toward back to traditional roots, imbibing those you know, elements of design, principles of design in what they are designing today. So still the percentage is very small, but it's a definitive you know, sense of direction where uh, Indian designers today, a certain number of them, are creating very interesting architecture suited for the Indian climate, most importantly. Now, even with all your travels and uh, global design outlook, do you still see hints of your Rajasthan heritage in your work? I believe that uh, when you do something, you do it based on that region. So because we did this really nice, interesting traditional house built completely in sandstone in Rajasthan, we got a call from someone in Delhi 
who wanted to do a very similar house. And we said, no, we will do it. Keeping the principles the same, but not those kind of elements. He said, no, but I've come to you for that. I said, no, I will not do it. Because those arches are, they don't belong to the architecture of Delhi. That's very specific to Rajasthan. And that is why we did it. And it's the first time I've done it also. But only because it is contextual there. And the same thing happens multiple times. The client will call, say, I saw this and I want to do this here. That's what it doesn't suit you. Yeah, it doesn't suit your location. Yeah. It doesn't suit the sun direction on your side. Yeah. So it's not going to be replicated. Very true. So you have to be specific. And now as someone who constantly embraces experimentation, how important do you think it is for artists, including architects, to evolve their styles over time? It is absolutely important. Why did you choose architecture? Architecture is art that you live in. Okay, which artist is going to keep painting the same art over years and years and years, you know? They might have a certain kind of character, but it will also evolve, right? So, and what is the fun in this profession if you're going to do the same thing again and again? This is one of the only professions in the world where you could be doing something different every single day. Every single project that you work on can be completely different. So, why? Would you do the same thing again and again and again? Because that's there in any, any other profession. Are you a learner? And uh, what is your process? I am a constant learner. You know, you learn with everything. With an exhibition, if it's just art, immersive art, so is, a, you know, experience of another level. You see some new interesting building and you go there, you walk through the spaces, you sit in a place and you see what it makes you feel. You learn something there also. And what do you experience when you're going from there to there? All of this you only learn when you actually experience these spaces in other buildings and then invite that, do it on your own in a different way. So maybe in one phrase, if I put it, uh, curiosity embedded with pursuit for learning. Absolutely. Perfect. How do you spend your Sunday, Sanjay? I mean, um, you're, you're, you're typically your downtime. Sunday is uh, the no time day. And uh, and how do you like to fill it? And Sunday is no time day. <laughs> no, no time in the sense you're not supposed to look at a watch. Okay, that's that's the key because all the rest of the day is no oh, okay. Lines. There is this meeting at three o'clock. There is this side at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. There is this happening. There is Zoom call happening at this time. Whatever. whatever. Mm -hmm. So on Sunday there is no time to wake up. Sundays so, are for chilling. So just go with the flow. Good coffee in a good place. <laughs> chilling. Super. Before I come to the end of this segment, one tricky one. Do you still fear failure? No. Did not fear it in the beginning also. And don't fear it now also. <laughs> Wonderful. So I think um, before I have the next question, let's um, take a walk together. Mm. And, uh, you know, a, some ki a kind of a walk that inspires our conversation forward. Okay. Good let's idea. Go. Let's come. go. Let's move. This is the Artis Atelier, where beauty and functionality meets at every corner. The designs you'll spot here pay homage to modern day minimalism. Artis as essentially born from art is about reimagining your bathroom as a work of art, adorned with opulent souvenirs. Coming to you, Sanjay, what does born from art mean to you? And how has art inspired your design over the years? Art has inspired design in every possible way. I mean, more than you can even imagine. I was an artist before I decided to become an architect. And it was the interest in art that finally led to wanting to do architecture. Because architecture is art that you live in. And it's something that is more permanent and affects human behavior. And art is inspirational in so many different ways. You know, I've got ideas looking at Picasso's Cubism paintings from sculptures by various sculptors. Some of those sculptures are really inspiring, giving you, you know, kind of forms that you maybe would not have imagined otherwise. And just looking at a sculpture makes you feel like, why couldn't the building be like this? Yeah, truly. I think uh, art is all about expression of freedom. And art has the ability to bend anything perceived otherwise as a straight line. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who are your inspirations in design? So rather than a particular person, there are a number of projects that have been really inspirational in the true sense. So what comes to mind immediately is uh, the MIT Stata building by Franco Gehry. I think one of his best works to date. The Bilbao Museum, of course, but even this, 
So it's you walk down this, you know, the circulation space. Suddenly the place opens up. Suddenly you and this your whole graphical volume. There is literally no straight line anywhere, and everything is you are in an actual sculpture. That's what you know. Franco Gehry's architecture is some with the good examples. Mm -hmm. There was another one by Benish and Benish in uh, Germany in Hanover, where he done a bank, and the bank was like this random stack of cubes of glass popping out in different directions. I mean, it was so free that you do you, you look at it and you I couldn't stop looking at the building because it was so radically different from any office building I'd ever seen before. So there are buildings like this: Coupe Hamel Blouse. Cinema theater complex in Dresden. Once again, a completely, totally abstract building where I actually spent three, four hours just sitting in the building in different parts, experiencing that volume, and it just makes you feel so good. And if a building, you know, the space in a building can make you feel so good, then that's that's you know, it just totally changes the way you think. How do you keep your pursuit alive when there are projects that sometimes don't even see the light of the day? The reality is that out of every 10 projects that we've designed, 1.5 or 2 come up okay. and 8 are on paper and they've remained on paper and those visions are never going to be realized. And there are so many examples I can give you, but the whole thing is you just got to keep on going and you say that, okay, that was a learning experience. Maybe I'll use some of that idea somewhere else at a later stage in life. Yeah, I think, I think persistence is the name of the game. Absolutely. Persistence, <laughs> belief, belief, and that thing that, you know, you know, one day I will get lucky and it will happen. <laughs> Since you're so much into uh, social digital space, uh, do architects and designers need to market themselves according to you? And how important is PR or even social media? I think uh, the most important thing is to do what you believe in and do something that is unique and different. and it will be picked up. So it's not really necessary to have PR. Yes, to have social presence has become important today because a lot of people only look at, I mean, I've got this kind of feedback saying that, oh, this architect, oh, but they've got no followers. I'm saying, but that's not the point. Look at the projects. They're amazing. Just because they don't have social media presence, that doesn't mean they're not good. Yeah. But so the reality is that today you need social presence. Have you made any efforts to build the design community? Is it important? I think it's really important. So there was a time when architects would only be competing with each other. Of course, yeah. we are still competing. But it's a healthy competition where, you know, you don't have to treat somebody as your enemy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So towards this end, uh, in 2016, I started this event called Dialogues, which brings together a few architects. And the difference is that they stay together. There's this whole knowledge sharing platform. We've addressed issues like what are the common hurdles that we face with clients? What are the common hurdles that we face in the profession while working on a project? What are the common hurdles in terms of getting fees, you know, fees not being paid? So number of things, plus, of course, the knowledge sharing of, you know, how we build something new, how X built something in Bangalore, how somebody built something in Delhi. And we also have people from overseas, from various countries who've also joined in dialogue. This is a very interesting knowledge sharing platform. But most importantly, what it has done is it has created this real nice community of architects where we can now freely ask people questions. Like earlier, let's say I got a project in Nagpur. I won't know who are the good consultants who work within Nagpur, a structural consultant, MEB consultant. But today, I can pick up the phone, I can call Mr. X, who I got to know from Dialogues, and he's a friend. And in two minutes, he gives me the answer. This Sanjay, this is the best guy, this is the best guy. Take my reference, no problem, and uh, they'll help you out. Now, how do you embrace wellness despite your hectic schedule? So it starts off with uh, an early morning workout for okay. me, uh -huh. which is at least five times a week. And I think that's really important because it just puts you... There's, you know, when you work out, there's, it's a cross between, there's a certain amount of meditation, there's a certain amount of just forgetting everything else, and then all these, uh, you know, there's a whole feel-good factor that lasts for a few hours after that, and exercise is known to do that. So that's one of the important things, and if you're on holiday anywhere, 
it's really nice to go for a swim, go for a massage, all of that is wellness. Totally chill and lose yourself. Take a moment to think about a piece of advice you'd like to offer to yourself in the future. I think the piece of advice would be to not just follow passion, but also have a little bit of business sense, which I did not do earlier. And I just kept going, going, going. A lot of times we didn't get the fees for the project. A lot of times we didn't get paid for the effort. So I think it's really important to put in that little bit of business in the beginning. Very well said. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sanjay. I hope it was fun for you. It was absolutely very, very interesting, this entire conversation. We hope that you continue to experiment with buildings, challenge the way Indian architecture is perceived, pushing boundaries by your way of contextual designing. Thank you all for tuning in. And I'm Mohit Hajela, your host with Architectural Digest, powered by Artis. Thank you.